right, so it's 12 o'clock. Let's begin. Uh, I would request everyone to, uh, first of all, thank you everyone for joining um, today's session. To begin, I would like to request everyone to please um, shut off your um, microphones because I don't want to, uh, I want to avoid that background noise. And uh, as I had mentioned in the email earlier, I would like to request everyone to please keep a pen and paper handy. Don't worry, I won't be making you writing. Um, I won't be making you write a lot. Just uh, we have some exercises planned, so I would like to um, start working with that. So I guess um, forty-eight people. I see. Uh, should I begin? I'm still kind of. Eid Mubarak, everyone. Yes, <laughs> thank you for reminding me. It's just this Eid didn't really feel like Eid, so forgot to mention that. All right, so let us begin. Um, today's topic is public speaking and presentation skills. Now, um, as teachers, we all have this quality where I would say everyone is, everyone is a great speaker and everyone has the, the skill to um, conduct their classes. So there's nothing really much to teach here, except just kind of go over certain things. And um, I would like to begin with a small question. Like when you are presenting something, whether it be a training session or whether you're in class and you're walking into your classroom for the first time of the new session and you don't know the students, do you, um, what exactly, how do you feel? I would like you to reply in the chat box, please. How do you feel? Do you feel calm and cool and collected or do you get nervous and stressed out? When you, for the first time, when you walk into a classroom in a new session and you don't really know the students, how do you feel before you begin your class? Do you, are you nervous or are you calm and composed. So I would like some of you to, obviously, this is an online uh, training session, so I'm not going to be able to see hands. So yes, thank you, Romana, ma'am. A little nervous. Okay, Wahab, sir, fantastic. You feel excited to meet new students. That's good. Uh, more responses, please. That would be great. Kunku, ma'am, you feel excited. That's fantastic. Uh, Papun, sir, you, um, you feel calm and composed, but a little nervous. Yes, that's true. We all kind of feel a little nervous from time to time. Nigar Ma'am says nervous. Prithvi Singh. Uh, sir, you're not able to hear me properly. Hello? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, it is okay, sir. Okay, because uh, Prithvi sir said he didn't wasn't able to hear me. That's why I was having to. Okay, Tarna ma'am, calm and composed. Taskia ma'am, excited. Shalini ma'am, ready to face new challenges. So I can say you also feel excited. Rumki ma'am, excited. Kumku ma'am, okay, okay. Imran sir, uh, excited, also nervous. Rajesh sir, fantastic, very true. Senior students, you feel excited yet composed. With middle school, it's mixed feelings because we do have a lot of naughty ones. And um, Yashna, ma'am, yes, excited but nervous. Shahid, sir, you're right. It does depend. I guess it depends on your day and how it's been going. Fine. But yeah, mostly I can say that, uh, wa alaikum salam, most of us basically have a similar type of an experience. Either we feel a bit nervous, a bit excited, we don't know what to expect. We don't know how to uh, react to that. So in today's session, I will be going over basic what we call the do's and the don'ts of public speaking. Now, when I say public speaking, I don't want you to think that we're going to um, be discussing about uh, public trainings and stuff because public speaking also falls under uh, what we call basically taking a class. When we take a class, that also is a part of public speaking. So... Let us first, uh, now, 
most people in the in the world, uh, believe it or not, maximum amount of people are scared of public speaking. After that, it's people being scared of heights. Then there's people that are scared of bugs and snakes, like spiders and cockroaches and so forth. Then a little fewer people are there who are scared of drowning. And then again, there are people who are scared of claustrophobia. Does everyone know what claustrophobia is? Can anyone um, kindly tell me really quick, what is claustrophobia? Yeah, I know, I know, we all know that. But I just want us to share it so that those who don't know will also know. Yes, fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Fear of being in closed places. I have an aunt, and she's about 50-something uh, years old, and she's so claustrophobic that she won't take the elevator anywhere. She won't get into a lift. And I live on the eighth floor of my apartment building. And uh, she hates it when I invite her over because she has to take the stairs all the way up to the eighth floor. And given her age, she doesn't feel very excited about that. So obviously, she never really shows up. But that's OK. I'm just, you know, that is claustrophobia. So a fear of claustrophobia is also prevalent in all of us. But apart from the fact that we're scared of, uh, some people are scared of needles, some people are scared of claustrophobia, some people are scared of flying, some are scared of zombies, some are scared of darkness, some are scared of ghosts, some are scared of heights, some are scared of spiders. The maximum amount of people of this world are scared of one common thing, which is public speaking. To be able, because we become very uh, conscious on how am I sounding? Am I coming out right? Am I sounding proper? Or how is it, how am I being um, perceived? Are people laughing at me? Are people thinking funny about me? So all these thoughts keep running through our minds, especially when we are doing a public presentation. So I think that it's very important to address this issue primarily and um, eventually once we can figure out uh, the do's like I said once I get into the do's and don'ts we will um, understand that it's really not that hard okay fantastic so for uh, the first exercise um, I would like you to uh, I, I think in my email I mentioned everyone I requested everyone to please carry a uh, a small piece of paper and a pen and I hope everybody has that if you don't I would like to request you to kindly quickly grab one just so we can do this and th this is something that you're um, just going to share with us in the comment box in the chat box for all our colleagues respected colleagues to see and we can all learn from each other so we've all had our experiences of speaking in public so I want you to think of I want you to think of Two words, I want you to think of two words or short phrases that describe what you remember about your first experience of speaking in public. I'm going to write this in the chat box in case anybody has any questions regarding that. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very good. Brain freeze. That's true, that's true. Nervous and appreciated, okay. Nervous, okay. New challenge, thank you, Anwar, sir. That's, that's interesting, that's, that's new, of course. That's a new challenge. Excited but nervous, yes. Nervous, even today, I mean, I have done this so many times. I have given so many speeches in my life, and even today, before I joined or before I started this session, I was feeling a bit nervous. I sat there and tried to, you know, come up with some ideas and how do I begin? What's my icebreaker? Because I have done a lot of presentations online. I mean, on on the podium, on stage, but this is the first time I'm actually doing a presentation on Google Meet. I mean, this is nothing like taking classes on Google Meet where, because in Google Meet, when we take classes, we give the yeah, <laughs> yes, you're right. We usually just give the assignments, students do it, and yes. 
Uh, Misty Ma'am, perfect. Butterfly in the tummy. Yes, I, I that's like understandable. Noreen Ma'am, nervous. Dina Ma'am, adrenaline rush. Okay. Knees were shivering. Yes, challenging. Samuel Sir, very good. Jasmine Ma'am, almost blank, yet you still, uh, mashallah, you can. You're very well composed. So I wouldn't say um, you are actually blank. Uh, well, up, Sir, feels like my head is turning round and round. Yes, I can understand that as well. High blood pressure, Prithvi saying yes, sir. That's uh, Prithvi, sir. <laughs> you should watch out for that blood pressure. That's no good. Uh, good, good. So I'm glad, glad to see everyone participating in this. Um, please do tell me if uh, the things get boring. I was going to be sharing a screen with you and having a PowerPoint presentation, but unfortunately, because I am not from the IT department and neither am I a computer science teacher, so my computer skills are pretty poor. So I wasn't able to share it successfully because when I try sharing it, when I was doing a demo training before I started this, the computer would keep, uh, the screen would keep freezing and that kind of ruins the entire thing. So I figured I'll just skip that and I'll just do it live. I feel like this is more successful because I can actually communicate with people and everyone can feel good. So my next point what i'm trying to say here is basically improving your ability to speak in front of others is basically it can go a long way in expanding not just your teaching life your social circle you can build stronger relationships with successful like-minded people and make new friends that's true uh, i don't know if all of us do that but i do this all the time whenever i walk into a classroom i first day of my class i usually spend by introducing myself and then i ask some of the students if not because time is limited so i ask most of the students to stand up and introduce themselves and say one or two lines about themselves so in that way we can that's that's what i would like to call as the icebreaker in that way i can get to um learn more about my students Students and also, you know, and they can also learn more about me. So it kind of creates that sense of ease between us. Uh, let me ask my respected colleagues another question. Can you mention some personal benefits of public speaking? In your opinion, what do you think are some personal benefits of public speaking? Please tell me. Just look at here. So many responses. So to facilitate others' knowledge makes us confident. Yes, you get to make your opinion known. People get to know you. Adnan sir said helps us get organized. Absolutely. Makes you more confident. Critical thinking. Improved skill to communicate ideas effectively. Yes, Desin ma'am. Know thyself more. Very good, very good. This is exactly what uh, I was looking for, certain answers like this. This is very good. It's good stuff. <clears throat> uh, I also feel that it reduces anxiety and fear. And one thing nobody seemed to mention was public speaking helps improve your memory. When you are speaking publicly, you are developing your memory. Your memory bank is, you're remembering more. And um, that usually helps you perform better, especially during public meetings. Or like I said, when you're taking a class. And you have greater control over your emotions and your body language. So if you, you know, you can smile more. And gesturing is very important. Moving your hands, pointing at things. These uh, create a better impact, especially when you are uh, performing any kind of a public speaking, whether it be taking a class or whether you'd be taking a student uh, session. Indrani, ma'am, you feel nervous during public speaking, okay. <laughs> all right, that's not a problem. We all feel a bit nervous. Even I'm, I know all of you, yet still I feel a bit nervous, so it's okay. Um, so, public speaking is actually a process. It's an act and an art of making a speech before an audience, whether the audience be your class or your group of teachers or your colleagues or, or anyone. 
for a matter of fact. When I'm doing uh, one of our graduation shows or when we're doing a program, I would say graduation ceremony or a Boishaki program or any of the other programs that I have hosted or anchored in my tenure here, I have always felt that there is always this issue that I do feel nervous, my palms get sweaty. I always tell whoever I can, one of the staff, to please bring me some water, even though we don't allow water inside the audience. So I can drink on it. <laughs> so basically, uh, there are basic three parts. A, a speech should always have some sort of persuasion. It's ethos, logos, and pathos. These three are the basic part of persuasion. Now, I will get into a little more detail. Good morning. Good afternoon, ma'am. I would get into a little more, I would like to get into a little more detail about the three thing, basic parts of persuasion. The first is the credibility of the speaker. So the person who is uh, speaking, is he credible? Is that, is he or she do you uh, understand their, uh, what they're saying and what their objective is? And then the second portion is the logos. The logos is the logic that is drawn by the speaker. And the pathos is obviously the ability to create a connection between the speaker and the audience, or like we say, the persuasive technique. Now, these three key elements are, for any basic public speech, these three key elements are very important. Uh, in order to to be asked to share their thoughts, what I try to do today is by asking you questions, all of you, and you were all responsive so well. You're all responding so well. That is the ethos because we have all spoken on the chosen topic. Um, every time I'm asking you, are you able to hear me? That is basically, you know, also in a way it's a logo. So I'm trying to communicate with my uh, colleagues and making sure everybody can hear me well and to hold the audience's attention a speaker must first establish an emotional connection with the listeners so yeah we had our little talk about how we had a fantastic Eid and you know everyone was staying home and staying safe and whatnot so that was good usually there are three types of uh, three types of speech one is impromptu one is a manuscript and the third one is an extemporaneous speech. The impromptu speech is basically when you um, just walk onto the uh, onto stage or you walk into class without any prior preparation and you just start speaking. Some people uh, often feel that this is not a very successful way, but then again, uh, others may say, well, no, I think this works well because I can prepare myself or I don't need any preparation. I can just go ahead with it. But famous public speakers have often said that impromptu speeches should still be prepared weeks in advance. But in real life, we really don't have that much time. The second type of speech, which is very important, is um, a manuscript, which means something is written and you read word for word from that speech. This is usually um, done in oh, social occasions, especially when I'm anchoring a program and there's a lot of guests involved. I make sure that every word that I say carries some weight and cannot be misquoted. That is why I write the speech, I show it to Vice Principal Ma'am, she approves it, and then I finally go on stage with it to make sure that nothing I say will be misquoted or misunderstood in any way. So manuscript speeches are also very effective. And the third one is the extemporaneous speech, which is basically to create some kind of an emotional uh, connection with our audience. This basically means that, um, for example, when we had the uh, scholars, the World Scholars Cup people that they came to present, the, the young man that came, he started up the conversation with a very... Um, he started an emotional connection with the audience, especially our students. And that, I would say, was an extemporaneous speech. So these are usually the three types of speech that we uh, deal with from day to day or whenever we're taking class or however. Right now, obviously, we're taking classes online. From the fear of public speaking. 
can I have some suggestions, please? I'm sorry. Avoid direct eye contact, yes. But then in, in that way, the good practice, yes, absolutely. Very good, Idrani ma'am. You have to in front of a mirror, that's very important. Yes, I agree. Any other pointers? Only Indrani Ma'am and Shamim Sir have suggested. So let me ask this question again. Recording, yes. Anwar Sir, I agree. How do you overcome the fear of public speaking? Like, since it's such a feared um, idea, how do you overcome this? Like, a lot of people are, are scared to death when it comes down, oh my God, I have to speak publicly. This is so scary. How do you overcome that? Sometimes the speaker might get overwhelmed and that might affect the pace of the conversation. How do we maintain an ideal pace? Okay. A dialogue rather than a speech, okay. Create a report, yes. Meditation, yes. Practice, practice more, yes. Okay, very good. I see a lot of good questions. Fake it till you make it. What's your thought on that? Um, Desin Ma'am, yes. I think that's also, it's true about TED Talk. I've, so, I've seen that as well. Fake it till you make it. But the point is, um, you, if, if you're going to fake it, you make sure that the credibility is still there. I mean, you don't want to lose credibility because once the audience, once you have lost your credibility with the audience, no matter what you say after that, it's pointless. So that is why you have to be very careful, especially when you're faking it, so that the people that you're talking to, especially in our case when we're speaking with young students, we want to make sure that they... Um, yes, Shahid sir, very right. Believe in yourself. So you have to show confidence, credibility. So when I take a class and if there's something I don't know, I don't want to make sure, like, let the students know that I don't know it because then they'll stop respecting and they'll be like, oh, this teacher doesn't know anything. So you don't want that to happen. So that is one of the reasons I asked you, like, I asked you all, like, how do you overcome the fear of public speaking? So thank you for your responses, everyone. Shamim, sir, get to know your audience as an icebreaker. Yes. Mahfuza, ma'am, said practice more. Isha, ma'am, practice. Sabrina, ma'am, said start small and stay focused. Yes, I absolutely agree. Wahab, sir, revise the concept night before the day. Yes, exactly. I did so as well. Know your script well. Yes. Prepare and practice. Adnan, sir, yes. Okay. For deep breathing, yes. Take part in public speaking. Yes, that's true. Uh, deep breaths always show confidence. Don't fear of silence. Just putting stress on thinking about the odds. Well, yes, Hans, sir, I absolutely agree with you. So overall, we can say that it should be swift, short, and don't panic. Just take it easy and everything will be fine. So yes. Now... Once this uh, presentation is over, I'll try to share. Uh, let me just see if I can find this one video on from TED Talks. And I had this ready for us. So I'm going to, so I'm going to share this with all of you right now. I'm going to put this in the chat box. So in case anyone wants to refer to it later, feel free to do so.
So this is also from Ted, Ted Talks. Uh, Sheryl Sandberg talks about why we have, yes, thank you, Mr. Ivan. This is, this is fantastic and it's very good. It's a good example of a very good, solid presentation. Now, now I would like to discuss about the do's and the don'ts of public speaking. The do's and the don'ts, like the, these are some of the do's of public speaking, which are very important. These are the key ingredients, actually, of public speaking. Uh, this is going to be similar to the ones that we had discussed just a little bit ago, and everybody told me how to get over it. So first, you keep it simple. Keep it, sh you know, because as human beings, um, we're adults, and even we have short attention spans. So we can only imagine our children, the students, how short their attendance attention span could be. So we make sure we keep it very simple. We try to be emotional, whether it be um, it can be memorable, something something short, something funny, something surprising. A lot of images is good. Um, in this case, today's case particularly, I'm not being able to um, show a lot of images because of the given fact that, uh, like I said, my share, I wasn't able to share the screen very successfully. Timekeeping, you have to make sure that in the back of your mind, you know how much time you're going to be allocating for what. So if you are going to be discussing a new topic, then the topic should be introduced maybe three to five minutes because you have a 40 minute class. So three to five minutes, you introduce your topic, four or five minutes, you uh, maybe do, or five to 10 minutes, you do some kind of a short exercise with the class. And then the remainder of the time, you give like another 10 minutes or 15 minutes for the students to work with themselves and you ask them to um, answer some kind of a task. And then the last five or seven minutes, you discuss with them and you come up with a solution of some sort, whether this be mathematics or so forth and so forth. All right, okay. So these are some of the things that you would like to remember, especially when it comes to, um, let me just see here. All right, so how do you prepare yourself? Like some people said earlier, and I think that is uh, very, very good. Enthusiasm is very important. Yes, Sumaya ma'am, I agree with you. So how do you prepare yourself for a successful presentation? First, you plan. You make a plan on you will plan. Like, like us heads of departments and in charges, we always tell our teachers, please send us your lesson plan for the week or for the month. I know it's very tedious. Of course, it's not fun. And I agree, but still we do it. This is why we do it. So that when you are taking your class and you have a plan, there is no room for error. You can improvise, but there is no room for error. So in that way, you do not lose that credibility in front of your students. That is very important. So that is why you must have some sort of a plan. The second thing is know your audience. Who is your audience? In my, in today's case, my audience is my colleagues, my respected colleagues. I know them. I know what background, their expertise. We have fantastic science teachers. We have fantastic math teachers, English teachers, Bangla teachers, uh, sports teachers, and uh, business teachers, and other sets of teachers as well from different backgrounds. But I, I know the audience. That is my point. When you walk into your classroom and when you are taking your class, you need to know your audience. You have to tailor your presentation based on the audience. For example, if I have a group of, say, grade 9B is a group of fantastic students. These are brilliant minds. I can teach them um, any kind of a new concept of, say, uh, English language, and they will quickly grasp it. But then, say, I go to 9C, and my students are not as brilliant as 9B is. So I have to slow down my lesson plan or slow down that teaching plan to tailor, to tailor it to them to accommodate their needs. 
because if I go at the same pace that I did with 9B, the other section may not be able to grasp as much. So you need to know your audience. Every student is different. Every student has to understand in a different manner. So that is why uh, Vice Principal Ma'am has already um, always told us to have some sort of um, visual presentation. Obviously, all our classrooms have uh, PowerPoint, I mean, uh, projectors, and we can use them to help explain our topics better. Okay, let me just see what the comments are before I continue further. Know your objectives, purpose, yes. Try to keep it interactive, yes. Very important. That is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get a response from all of you, and I really appreciate and I want to thank you all for using the chat box so efficiently and making so many fantastic comments. I will be going through them after once this session session has ended. I will be going through the recording just to see how um, what kind of responses I got. Yes, Jasmine, ma'am, I absolutely agree. Time management, being on time. Being in time is very important. We might think, well, what's the big deal? I walked in five minutes late, no big deal. That five minutes late or that one, two minutes late after the bell rings when the students are ready for you and you don't walk in, that creates that gap. And that gap usually ends up taking 40 minutes to fill. So you don't want that to happen. That is why, Jasmine, ma'am, thank you for bringing that up. Very important time management, being on time. And Indrani ma'am also mentioned something very, very useful, intonation and body language. Your bo you could be having the worst day. You could be having the worst day, for example. But when you walk into that classroom, you're, you should be happy. You should seem friendly with a smile. Sometimes I'm in class, and I suddenly see one of the staff. They walk in with a little slip, and that says from vice principals, see me now. Right away, my blood goes cold and my heart starts beating. But I still smile. I still smile and I still take my class, despite the fact that inside I'm literally breaking down in fear. But I still make sure that the students cannot see it. So my point is you need to show that sense of your body language has to your body language. Yes, yes, you're right, Jasmine, ma'am. So your body language should be very positive. That's my point. Another thing is uh, slow down and breathe. Like I always tell Jasmine, ma'am, I'm sorry, Jasmine, ma I'm not trying to pick on you, but I'm just saying you need to slow down sometimes and you need to breathe. If you um, are talking too fast, some students may not be able to understand what you're saying. If I just keep speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and not let anybody else respond, then out of the people that have ch commented in the chat box, only four or five people will have commented because most of you will not even catch on to what I'm saying. So I have to tailor my speech according to my audience. And that is why I'm slowly, I'm breathing, I'm talking, I'm breathing, I'm talking. So how do I do this? I practice this prior to this presentation. I recorded myself when I, before I started with you last night, I yes, Onupa ma'am, you're right. Breathing really works. And before let's say twelve thirty four. And I still have some material uh, to go. Uh you can't hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes now, now we can. Yes. Now we can. Okay, I, I think there might be some problem with the connection because in my on my end it says uh, connection is fine, so that is why. But thank you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So, like I was saying, your body language is very, very important. Um, there is, if you were, get a chance at a session, if you are free, go to TED Talks and you can see there's something called power poses. How to stand in front of your students that gives you a sense of confidence. That's very important, actually. I mean, though we might feel that this is so funny, who cares about how you stand? No, it's not true. You have, there's a, per, there's a particular posture 
that you should um, you should stand accordingly. So in that way, students can realize that you are confident. So a lot of our, a lot of my colleagues have said, a lot of my colleagues have mentioned that um, good posture or you should show confidence. So this confidence comes from the way you stand. That is what I'm trying to say. It's very important. Okay, so very, very important to have um, a good posture. Uh, some of the golden rules of the do's of public speaking, I would say, um, compose yourself. Think about what you will go, what you're going to say. Familiarize yourself with the room. Know where who's sitting. Know where your students are sitting. Who's sitting where in the front, the back, the middle, the sides, everything, and dress accordingly. If I wear something that is, that is why our school, in our school, the teachers always recommend, like the teachers, if sound goes mute, okay, okay, okay. Please let me know if it's mute, because I'm not going, because I can't, uh, I won't be able to know if, if I go mute, but I try not to go mute. Um, so we always have to dress appropriately. We wear proper clothes, proper clothes, and um the proper dress pants and dress shirts whenever we take classes we wear shoes that is why um you know informal clothing is not appreciated inside school because your clothing tells a lot about you and that demands respect that is obvious when i when a person walks into the room with a suit or with a proper shirt and pant people end up respecting him more than a person that would be respected in um with three quarter pants or a t-shirt now uh, when I was in California and when I used to, uh, when I was a student in university, I had some professors that would just walk into class with a three quarters shorts and a t-shirt. And back then, um, I, I feel like what mattered more was the delivery of the lecture, and especially because we were in university. But in the school level, I feel the, the, uh, the, 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 the concept of discipline should be more. And that is why it's very important about dressing up properly for the event. Another thing that you must remember is don't get stuck behind the lectern, like behind the podium. If you are speaking, move around, walk around, through, walk through your class. Don't stand at one place and just keep your lecturing because students will lose your uh, students will lose attention and they will just stop, you know, responding. Now I'm going to look at, at the don'ts of of what you shouldn't do. I'm going to share a short video. Appearance uh, crazy positive. Yes, uh, Jasmine, ma'am, please go ahead. Jasmine, ma'am, go ahead. I think you said you have. How does accent, accent plays no role. Accent plays no role. Your accent, there's no such thing. To, in my mind, as an English teacher, I feel there's no such thing as accent. As long as your communication is clear, uh, the clarity is important, and your words, the students should understand what you're trying to say. That is what's important. You could have an American accent, you could have a British accent, a Bangladeshi accent, an Indian accent, an Irish accent, a Scottish accent, or even an alien accent, Scandinavian accent. That is not relevant. This is what I call petty issues. To focus, oh, his accent is not good, his accent is better. No, these are petty. We speak the way we learned. So it doesn't matter whether I say dance or dance, or I say romance or romance, that is not important. What's important is, is my student understanding what I'm trying to say? So yes, thank you for bringing this question up, Jasmine Ma'am. It's a fantastic question. I would like to applaud you. Accent plays no role whatsoever. So please never feel, exactly, we're not native speakers. Exactly. Thank you, Kumku Ma'am, you're right. So accent plays no role in our presentation. So never focus on your accent. Shayat, sir, you're absolutely correct. Pronunciation is what is, what is important. Your clarity and your voice should be very clear. 
How about fake accents? Uh, Shamim, sir, I feel that um, there's no such thing as fake accent. When a person speaks a certain way, they might not feel comfortable or they may feel uh, insecure about the way they sound. So they might adapt a different kind of a tone or speaking. So I think that is uh, that should be definitely avoided because people because that boost. See, when you are giving a presentation, your confidence level should be up there. And if you're going to be focusing on faking your accent, then your con your confidence level is low. So you must avoid that. I have shared another YouTube video just uh, link just a, a little bit ago, a couple of minutes actually ago. Um, this is a video on. On what you should not do, what you should not do. These are this is a very important video. Once we're done, we would also like to. Uh, I would ask request you all to please take some time and watch. Let's just see what uh, Jasmine Mam has said. Scientifically, we are able to adapt accent till the age of seven years. After that, the linguistic part of our brain gets weaker than before. Just annoying. Absolutely, absolutely, Jasmine Mam, you're so right. Uh, that is why to worry about who speaks with a what accent or what accent am I speaking with is irrelevant it is absolutely irrelevant what matters is is my voice clear are my are the people I'm speaking to are they able to understand what I'm trying to say that's all that matters and obviously I would try to refrain from a lot of informal texts uh, informal words such as gonna wanna like um, Mr. Shamim Hussain in his presentation he brought up a very good valid point about how we um, end up using a lot of informal language so you, whenever you are in class please make sure don't use that don't say okay you guys we say that even I say that at times try not to say that let's say okay students you know so little things we need to just know about ourselves so that we can fix it. Now, what do we avoid? Three things very important that you must avoid during your um, classrooms. Now, this I have uh, seen. I've, I try not to do it. I don't know if, if I have. Please do tell me so I can fix myself. But this is something... This is something um, we see a lot. Let's just see my comments of my colleagues here. Um, uh, better to be yourself since people can detect anything fake. Yes, as far as ma'am, you're right. Sabrina, ma'am, real accent might seem fake. So, yeah, we don't worry about um, accents. Like I said, it's very petty. Adnan, sir, intonation and pronunciation of specific words can be looked up by the teacher. Accent will not matter. Exactly, Adnan, sir. Accent is not relevant as long as the pronunciation is proper and its pronunciation is. So, if I'm going to say important, then the word is important. I don't want to say important because that's a different word and means something else. So these are little things that we must be very aware of. So what are the things that we avoid when we, um, and during our presentation, three things. One is the occasional um or um or, that is okay. We all, um, well, um, okay, fine. But too much of that is no good. So you must make sure that you avoid too much of the um or the er. So that is one thing. The second thing, please share all the links in the mail if possible once we disconnected. Yes, of course I will, Shamim sir. Thank you. The second thing that I would like to remind everyone is don't kill your audience by sticking to a PowerPoint. I don't mean any offense towards our colleagues who are using PowerPoint for their presentations, which is fantastic, a great job. But you might want to create some kind of an interactive session as well, especially when you're taking a class. Sometimes I'm walking around the hall and I see some teachers taking classes and they have their PowerPoints on and students are watching it. But the problem is, like, we know that students have a short time attendance span. So what happens is, um, attention span, sorry. So what happens is students lose interest. And this PowerPoint just basically keeps going, or this, per, this, the video, or the presentation, or whatever. So let's not, let's avoid that. So that's the second thing you want to avoid for a poor presentation. You don't want to stick completely to the PowerPoint or the presentation. If I was to just sit here and show you video after video after video, it would get very monotonous. So that's what I'm trying to communicate with everyone. I'm, I appreciate my colleagues, you know, responding. Um, 
Anwar Sir said, avoid showing your back. Of course, of course, definitely try not to show your back. And don't read directly from your notes or your slides. Don't just read whatever you wrote because the people sitting there best believe they will fall asleep. And as teachers, we have all mastered the craft of falling asleep with our eyes open. Believe it or not, we all can do that. And we can do it so well now. So let's not, uh, let's avoid that. So how will you, um, let's say, how would you make sure that your presentation is, yes, Imran Said, sir, I agree. I'm sorry, I'm just going to interrupt everyone here. I rely on storytelling instead of, yes, absolutely, Imran, sir, I have a story for all of us in a bit. <laughs> and tuning up with the audience, yes, Shahid, sir, I agree completely. Very important. You need to, like I said, tailor to your audience's needs not all your audience will be of the same level so you need to tailor your speech or tailor your class presentation accordingly so how do we do tackle with this we arrive early try to arrive early unless you have a class prior i understand that's different but when you're dealing with a presentation like say like today i came earlier i, I actually came quite early i tried this whole thing twice before i made sure everyone was ready for all of us um, I keep a backup of everything, a hard copy of my presentation. I have it here. That's what I'm looking at as I'm speaking to everyone. Um, don't spend half your presentation trying to fix an IT problem. Uh, once we're towards the end, I'll share a short video of uh, Barack Obama's presentation where the, um, the presidential seal falls off the podium. But that does not you know deter him from speaking he still continues with the speech and he makes a joke out of it and everyone laughs so that goes to show how positive barack obama being the president of the u.s at that time was so powerful and it's so eloquent such an eloquent speaker he was yes anwar sir try to know your age group indrani ma'am said provide some information real life incidents that is related to the yes absolutely absolutely like i told you earlier when i when i started i was talking about some of my experiences. Okay. Um, if there are fewer people, think what you would cut. Yes, there are things like I had a lot of things planned, but since I might be running over time, there's a lot of things I've jumped over and I've not discussed today because obviously public speaking is not something that is uh, done on a done in one that can be done in one hour. It usually takes much longer. So I'm trying to make it short and interesting for all of us. Now I'm going to be sharing the link of, uh, of that video of Barack Obama. So I hope everybody enjoys it. I will paste it right now into the chat box. Yes. Anwar, sir, you're correct. Divide the time for all the sections properly. Yes, I absolutely agree. But sometimes you need to understand that, um, especially when it's an interactive session, it's time may not be, time may not go as planned. So you might have to, you might think, oh, I'm going to spend ten minutes on this, and that might end up going to be fifteen minutes. So it's 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 good to have a plan, but sometimes you have to be ready for the unexpected like for the interactive sessions, especially like, for example, when um, one of my respected math teachers, uh, when they are explaining some kind of a new concept in mathematics and they have planned in their lesson plan, okay, I'm going to spend seven to 10 minutes on this particular topic. And then they explain it on their topic and then on the board and they do everything perfectly. But then one of the weaker or one of the lesser, uh, one of the challenge students in the back says, sir, I don't understand this. Can you re-explain the whole thing? So then the teacher has to do so again and again and again. And that ends up taking up that extra five or ten minutes that he had planned or he or she had planned for the lesson. So that is what, so, but yes, I, um, Anwar, sir, I do agree with you. Divide the time and sections properly. Um, I have just shared a, a video. I'm sorry, uh, the chat, in the chat, there's a video, a short video for your entertainment. So hopefully you guys get, get a chance you all can get a chance to see it once you uh, once we're done here. And don't worry, it will be done soon. Um, 
I would like you all to, when you get a chance, to please give me some feedback on today's presentation. Email me onto this. You can reply to that email that I sent, informing you about today's pro uh, today's presentation. So you can, you know, give me some honest feedback. And please don't think um, I, I want it to be constructive criticism. If I make mistakes, if there are some things that need to be changed, please do tell me because I need to perfect myself as well. Obviously, thank you, Masum, sir. You're so kind. You're so Masum. <laughs> um, yes, and one thing I would always like to request everyone is to please make sure you practice as much as possible. And... Uh, now I'm going to, uh, we have now <clears throat> come almost to the uh, end of our session. So I would like to share with you two small anecdotes that I have come across. Uh, oh, yeah, we have one last exercise to finish. So I would like everyone to do this. Please, let me see here. I would like you all for one second to think of yourself. Thank you, Farna, ma'am. Everyone, uh, re I'm requesting you to please uh, mute your mics. Introduce yourself as a supermarket item. What would you be? If I went to the supermarket and if you were an item in the supermarket, what would you be? Thank you, Azar. Somebody has their mic on very loud. Okay. All right. Let's see. Adnan Sir Coke. Hansan, of course, fire is ma'am, hand sanitizer. Rajesh Sir Honey. Yashna ma'am, coffee. Shaila ma'am, salt. Thank you, Mahfuza ma'am. Thank you, Mustafi sir. Niaz sir, cheese. Right, Tarana ma'am, that's very good. Thank you for mentioning that. But you have to think, I, we, I try to make people think out of the box just to keep a little bit of entertainment. And don't leave just yet. I have an interesting anecdote for all of us before we go. Jasmine ma'am, a big Hilsha fish, okay, even if it's not in season. Noreen Bashar ma'am, chocolate. Preeti ma'am, water, okay. <laughs> Nigar ma'am, COVID test, yes. Ravana ma'am, chocolate, yes. Spice, Duke sir, good one. All right. Tea, Shakila ma'am, yes. Wow, sir, silver tea, oh, wow. Rafi ma'am, whipping cream, okay. Noodles, uh, Shamim sir, a pen, very interesting, very different, yes. White sir, tea, yes. I would think of myself as a Lysol, as, a, as that one that I use every day now that we're stuck at home and I have to wipe the, mop the floor. So, yes, Lysol. <laughs> Green tea, yes, Kumkum ma'am, good one. Imran Said sir, adhesive, Dettol. Wow, Batrisem shampoo, it's too expensive. Face mask, okay, nice one. Uh, Niaz Mushid, I'm not sure what that is, but okay, smiley face, coffee, salt, sugar, coffee. Good, good, fantastic. I'm so happy to see everyone responding. And so before I uh, let you all go, i like you. I like to finish up with a small joke. Thank you, Shahida ma'am. So a genie... Uh, we all know what a genie is, right? When the Aladdin's genie and you find a lamp and you rub it. So a teacher was walking down the road and he found a lamp. He picked it up and he started cleaning it because it's very dusty. So he started rubbing on it and then out popped a genie. The genie said, okay, since you have, um, ow, since you have freed me, I'm just going to mute whoever has their mic off again. Somebody's mic is on. Okay, great. So, like I was saying, so out pops the genie and he gives the teacher one wish. The teacher says, I love Hawaii, but I hate flying and I hate boats. I'm scared of flying and I hate boats. Can you build me a highway from here to Hawaii? 
the genie says, are you insane? Do you have any idea how impossible it would be to put pilings into the Pacific Ocean? Or how much concrete you would need for 2,000 miles of highway? Or how much trouble it would be to get an environmental impact release? The teacher says, okay, well, in that case, I would like to know how to tackle the coronavirus. Genie thinks for a few minutes and then says, were you thinking of a one lane or a two lane highway? So the moral of the story is, I realize this has been a tough year and the morale is low, but we need to stop infighting because it's infectious. And where does that infection start? In our minds. So watch your thoughts. They become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. They become your character. And watch your character. Your character becomes your destiny. Let's look inside ourselves and go out and create our destiny today. Thank you, everyone, for your attendance. And I really appreciate everyone's participation. Have a great day. Stay safe. And see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Well done. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Imran, sir. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Most welcome. Thank you, sir. <clears throat>